The EU has set itself some very ambitious environmental objectives as part of the implementation of the Paris Agreement. The main objective is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the EU by 55% by 2030 compared to 1990. And the ultimate goal, of course, is to attain net zero emissions by 2050. In order to achieve this, a lot will need to be invested. Some of that money will come from private investors, of course. And this is why we have an EU taxonomy. The taxonomy is aimed as, uh, at directing money and providing a framework to know which companies' activities can be considered aligned with the EU's environmental objectives. But some of the money will also come from governments and from the EU. And this is where the Green Deal comes into the picture. The Green Deal is a public investment plan implemented by the European Union to channel public money towards projects and innovations contributing to our common environmental objectives. So let me first explain where the money will come from. It will mainly come from two sources. The first one will be the European Union budget for roughly half of the money. And the second source will be a new program called Next Generation EU. The centerpiece of this program is a so-called resilience and recovery facility. And this facility, it's not designed to provide emergency money. It's mainly designed as an investment plan that will provide money for a couple of years. How will it work? Well, the European Commission will borrow on the market on behalf of the European Union. And then the funds will be either granted to countries or given to countries in the form of loans. Now, the idea of this plan is to reduce growth divergences. So some countries will receive more money than others uh, because the idea is to facilitate the recovery of countries that have been hit hardest during the pandemic, but also uh, it will help countries that were struggling before the pandemic. So it's really a long-term investment plan to help narrow growth divergences. And just to give you an example, Greece will receive 15% of its GDP Italy will receive 10% of its GDP. France or Germany will just receive less than 1% of their GDP. So clearly, it's designed to help some countries more than the others. So altogether, if you look at the total size of the Green Deal, with the funds coming from the EU budget and the funds coming from next generation EU, the size of the Green Deal will amount to slightly more than half a trillion euros that will be invested over 2021 to 2027. Florence just uh, told you that the EU would spend, roughly speaking, half a trillion euros over a six years period. Is that enough? And how do you assess how much is enough? L let's make a, a quick calculation to get an idea of orders of magnitude here. Let's say we would spend 100 billion a year, which is slightly more than what the, uh, the Green Deal would have spent, in wind turbines, installing wind turbines all around Europe. So every year, 100 billion. How much renewable electricity would we get from these 100 billions? Well, if you do a simple uh, calculation, you will come to the conclusion that it would, would generate about 200 terawatt hours per year in renewable electricity. Um, that sounds like a lot. Now, if you compare that amount to how much electricity is consumed every year in Europe, you see that it represents about 7% of European power generation or consumption. That's one and the same thing. So 100 billion a year, is that a lot? It is significant. 7% of our power generation is something. But is it enough? to transform the EU and make it carbon neutral by 2050 and drop emissions by 55% by 2030? 
Probably not, knowing that all, not all the money will be channeled towards wind turbines and other renewable energy sources. It is a start, but clearly we will need also private money, private investments to join this public effort if we are to achieve our uh, environmental objectives. This is a tricky question because what matters for the economy is new money invested. And as I've said, part of the funds will come from next generation EU, but part of it will come from the EU budget. The part that will come from the EU budget is just reallocation of funds. So it's not new money. So the part that is really new money is the part coming from next generation EU. And only part of it is devoted to the Green Deal. So the impulse to the economy is a total size of next generation EU. And estimates of the impact on the economy ranges from an additional 0.4% to 0.8% GDP growth at the EU level. Now, some countries will benefit much more than the others because they will receive more funds. But what is tricky is really to know how much the country will effectively spend of the total amount of money they will receive. So there are two issues with this program. The first one is, will the country have effectively the capacity to invest all the funds they will receive? And just to give you an example, if you look at structural funds Spain received in the previous EU budget, Spain just spent 43% of the funds it was entitled to spend. So clearly there is further problem of uh, will the country be able to spend all that money? Will they have the project, project ready to implement? Now, the second issue is about governance. And here also uh, it's important how to prevent that the fund will be misused. Uh, what is the process in order to avoid corruption uh, and misallocation of the funds? Now, there is a process and there is a control done by the European Commission, so the process is quite clear. Countries have to submit their recovery and resilience program to the European Commission. The EU will assess the program and then the European Council will approve uh, the, the plan. Once approved, the European Commission will pay 13% upfront to countries in order to kickstart investment projects. And that's very important because it's upfront money that the country are going to use pretty quickly. But then the other, the rest of the money will be given uh, slowly after a check of, of the process. The European Commission will have to check that uh, the money is effectively used and that the plan are effectively implemented. So in order to gauge the impact of this plan, uh, everything will depend on implementation uh, and the fact that countries will be able to put in place the reforms they have committed to. Spain has committed to labor market reform, Italy has committed to justice reform. So clearly this is also uh, something that will be important uh, to gauge the success of this plan. If countries fail to deliver, it will clearly undermine the confidence of countries into the next generation EU program and it could also increase opposition in future joint borrowing. Now, if the program is a success, this program could transform into a permanent new tool for the Europe, and it could also, in the future, pave the way for a fiscal union. As we just saw, this plan is ambitious. It will clearly help the EU on its path to become carbon neutral by 2050, but it will not be enough. Private capital will be needed for achieving that objective, and it will require careful political management in order to be effectively and successfully implemented.